Hello, everyone, and welcome to this video on sustainability and ESG at the ADAC Engineering Group AG. I'm Sebastian Lehmann, Head of Investor Relations, and I will guide you through. As usual, before we get started, please carefully read the legal disclaimer. And then first of all, I'm gonna show you where you can find relevant information about sustainability at the ADAC Group on our website. If you will visit the website, first of all, please click at the top ADAC Group. And then you won't find sustainability information in the investor relations segment, but you will find it at the company section. Why this? Well, we for sure know that you as investors are extremely interested in sustainability information. But moreover, also our customers, our suppliers, our employees, and other groups are interested in sustainability information. This is why we decided to place sustainability in the company section of our website. Now, if you click there, you're going to find the recent sustainability report, which has been recently published. And now we're going to go into some key highlights of this report. First of all, we're going to start with social. Why social? It's because we are an engineering services provider. So we are not producing parts or goods, but we are employing people. We need good and skilled workforce. So this is why social is the most important topic in our sustainability report. Looking at the materiality analysis of the GRI standards, you see that eight out of 14 metrics refer to social issues at the EDA group. This is why social is so important for us. So in the report, you will read a lot about our new M value proposition. You will read about the implementation of the so-called WEEDA program. This is a program that was all about a modern working environment, for example, hate adjustable desks, but also conferencing rooms, collaboration spaces, and a modern working environment for all of our employees, which we have rolled out at our new premises in Munich last year for the first time. It's about software tools for a better cooperation, and it's about mobile and flexible work. We are offering a lot of voluntary benefits to our employees. You will find a long list in the report. And then training and education. It's extremely important for us to have well-trained people in-house. So we have our own training team and a lot of trainees. And we are extremely pleased that one of our trainees last year has become the German champion in body and vehicle construction mechanic. And this clearly showcases that our training is extremely good. And finally, we have been an award-winning employee conditions with the Top Employer Award, which we received for the 14th time last year. Coming to environment, which is another important topic as we for sure know. The good news is last year, we managed to decrease our CO2 emissions by 9.6%. And we wanna keep decreasing it. The target for the current year, 2022, is a decrease of around eight to 10% per employee. We will manage to do so, especially by the purchase of 100% of electricity in Germany coming from renewable energies with the beginning of this year. And then in the report, you will find more information on the first adoption of the EU taxonomy. So let me tell you about a little bit more about the EU taxonomy. As investors, you will know what it's all about. It is that investments from private should be shifted to sustainable projects. But how to find out what is sustainable? Well, the EU has uh, given out a lot of laws, 600 pages, fantastic to read. And now the question is, what did we do with it? First of all, we had to identify the technical screening criteria that are potentially relevant to our business activities. And these were the two that are named here. Most important for us is B, research, innovation, and development of products. After we did so, we have determined the extent to which our economic activities comply with these relevant technical screening criteria. So what we did is we filtered all of our projects that we are handling, first of all, by an ABC analysis to cover two thirds of our total revenue. And then the filtered projects should meet a certain threshold of 70,000 to 500,000 euros. Why this? Because we wanted to show a certain materiality. Just to give you a feeling for it, we are handling about 6,000 projects per year. So if we would uh, really check each of these projects, uh, there won't be any big materiality. So by doing so and filtering the projects, 
we are clearly showcasing um, a materiality. And then the filter projects have been examined, resulting of the filters with regard to the technical screening criteria. And then finally, we did what the EU taxonomy says, meaning do these projects have a substantial contribution to one of the EU taxonomy targets? Do they not significantly harm one of the other targets? And are we fulfilling some minimum safeguards? And after doing this exercise, this is finally the result. It shows that 24.3% of our sales revenues last year were aligned with the EU taxonomy. Well, now our target at the EDA group, or let's say our aspiration is to increase this number, of course, year by year. But we have to make one very big disclaimer, and this is really important to understand. As an engineering services provider, the precise nature of the activities in our projects depends entirely on what our customers have commissioned us to do. And so far, considerable fluctuations may occur in the individual rates from one year to another. To give you an example, if our customers would decide to only develop zero emission cars, trucks, motorcycles, or buses, or whatever for future, then of course the revenue share, which is taxonomy aligned, will go up. But if the clients decide to only outsource those projects which are linked to internal combustion engines, then our proportion will go down. So this is clearly inherent with our business model and it is important to know when you are looking at the EU taxonomy figures for the EDA group. Another very important thing that I have to mention here and that I have to explain is our approach towards sustainability. By now, we have been talking about the what we call EDAC-centric sustainability. This means all of our measures and efforts on economic, ecologic, and social issues. It's about our reporting, the ratings, and of course, regulatory requirements such as the EU taxonomy. But there is a second part, which is, from our point of view, even a bit more important. And this is the client-centric sustainability. Now, what does this mean? Last year, we have founded our Competence Center for Sustainable Vehicle Development. In this center, we are helping our clients to reduce their greenhouse gases, save materials, and improve recyclability of their products. Even more services will come up over the next quarters and years. So why is this so important to us? I'm going to explain it to you at the following chart. Let's imagine the life cycle of a car. So then the question is, where does the CO2 footprint of this car is being created? It's in the third, fourth, and fifth section of this chart. It's during the production, the use, and the disposal of the car. On the other hand side, the possibility to influence the CO2 footprint happens in the conception and development phase. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly the core business of EDAC. So we can help our clients to develop their products in a way that the future CO2 footprint is limited. And this is why we think it is really important to know that we as EDAC can have a very, very big influence on CO2 footprints of products. And if our customers want us to help, we of course want to help them too. So finally, let's come to ratings. For sure, ratings are important, but they are not all. We at the EDA Group, we know we are not cutting edge at the ratings, but here again, our ambition is to get better year by year. And this is what I would like to show you at this chart. Looking at our EcoVadis rating, we started back in 2019 with 41 points and the bronze status. We have improved our rating year by year and currently hold the silver status with 56 points. The ambition is, again, to get better year by year. Another rating, Gaia from France, is showcasing almost the same, improving year by year. And there's one more thing that is really important to know. If you look at the Arabesque S-Ray rating, which is publicly available, you will see that the EDA group already meets the 1.5 degree target of the Paris Agreement. This is a great news, and this is something that we are really proud of. Overall, our mission here at the EDA group states our ambition. We want to shape the future mobility together, efficient, safe, and sustainable.
Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a short overview on sustainability here at the EDA Group. If you have more questions or if you require a meeting, please do not hesitate to contact me. I will be more than happy to support you in any way. Thanks everyone for watching this video and have a good day. Bye bye. Since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. That's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and value-added content possible for you. If you're a stock-listed company or corporation and want to find out how we at C-Celebrene can make a company video with and about you, please email us at community at c